This is Algebra 2 with Trig, 8b.4e. We're going to use the Pythagorean identity. Pythagorean identity, as the name suggests, is very similar to what's considered the Pythagorean theorem. We know the Pythagorean theorem to be a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Here, we have our y value, which is sine, being squared. We have our x value being squared. And on the unit circle, the hypotenuse is always 1. So 1 squared would give us 1. When we're solving for one of our trig functions, we can use this Pythagorean identity to help us calculate it. You have other skills that you probably already understand, other ways that you could solve for a missing. But this is just another option to use. This identity is true for all real values of theta. It is a result of applying the Pythagorean theorem to a right triangle that is formed in a unit circle for any or each of the theta. The problems that we can use the Pythagorean theorem for, like any identity, the Pythagorean identity can be used for rewriting trigonometric expressions in equivalent or more useful forms. You'll do a lot of identities in pre-calc. So we're going to come down here, and we're going to have an angle of theta in the fourth quadrant. So that's a key idea that you need to be aware of. You're in the fourth quadrant. Sine is negative 24 over 25. So we're going to plug our sine value in for this sine. Then we're going to solve for the cosine. So we know that sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta equals 1. Well, when we plug in our negative 24 over 25, we put it right in there, and we're squaring it. We'll subtract that across. Now, when you subtract it across and we square 24, we get 576. And you square 25, we get 625. When you square a negative, it becomes a positive. So we're subtracting our positive. We have 1 minus this amount. Well, we know to do fractions, we need common denominators. So this is where the 49 over 625 comes from. Then because it's cosine squared, we take the square root of both sides, which gives us a plus or minus answer. Now let's think about what this means. Love the geometry. So negative 24 over 25. We know that 24 over 25 is very close to 1, so it's going to be way down here. So this would be a triangle that we could make in that location. There are two spots where this is possible. When x is negative, we'd be in a triangle over here. When x is positive, we'd be in a triangle in the fourth quadrant. And we want to be in the fourth quadrant. So that's why we're going to use cosine of theta to be 7 over 25. Not the plus or minus, and definitely not the minus. It needs to be a positive 7 over 25. Long story short, all we're going to do is use a Pythagorean theorem identity and calculate our unknown variable. So on the flip side, we have an angle in the third quadrant.
third quadrant's down here. We're going to have an x value be negative 3 fifths, which is like negative 0.6. You can also think about it as a triangle that would be formed. If this was negative three and this was five, the cosine would be of this angle would be adjacent over hypotenuse. It needs to be in the th uh, third quadrant. So if we wanted to know what sine was, you could theoretically just use Pythagorean theorem, figure out the missing side, and then do opposite over hypotenuse, and you have your answer. We can also use our trig identity. So we're going to plug in negative three-fifths and square that, because that is what cosine is. We'll subtract that over. Now we'll have negative three-fifths being squared. When you square a negative, you get a positive. When you square three, you get nine. When you square five, you get 25. So to calculate this, We've got to use 25 over 25 minus 9 over 25. That gives us 16 over 25. And when we take the square root of it, we get plus or minus 4 fifths. And if we're going to be in the third quadrant, we need a negative y value. So that's actually the best answer is sine of theta to be a negative 4 fifths. With our next one, same idea. Now we're in the fourth quadrant. You could imagine a sign being coming down and a hypotenuse. So we're going downwards, which is the negative. If we're trying to find cosine, we're trying to figure out this value, this x value. Now you could use just the normal Pythagorean theorem and then you could calculate the adjacent over hypotenuse. That would mathematically work. But to use the Pythagorean identity, we might not even need to show the picture. You just take your negative half and plug that in here. We're going to subtract it to the other side. We have to calculate out what this is. When you square a negative, you get a positive. Square one, you get one. Square two, you get four. So this is one fourth, which is being minus from, from one. So that's four over four. And you might not be surprised that this becomes 3 fourths. And when you take the square root of that, cosine is going to become the square root of 3 fourths. It is originally plus or minus, but because we're not talking about the angle coming over here for a sine to be negative 1 or negative a half, we want a cosine that is positive. And I did it again. When you take the square root of the top, you also take the square root of the bottom. This needs to be a 2. So the rest are just continue practice problems. So even without a graph, making a sketch, we know that the sine is 9 over 41. 
So that's going to be 9 over 41 being squared. We're going to subtract that across. That's going to give us 81. And 41 squared gives us 1681. So I did that all in one step. So that's 1681 over 1681, because we need common denominators, but I need a value of 1. That's going to give me 1600 over 1681. And when we take the square root of that, we're going to get plus or minus 40 over 41. And to land in the second quadrant, that tells us that we have to go to the left. We need a negative x value. So our best answer is negative 40 over 41. So this last one, you go ahead and try it. Pause the video. Work your way through it. And if you have questions, regardless, come back and we'll walk you through it. So a cosine of, say, 13 over hypotenuse of 30. we're looking for the sine, which is essentially the opposite over hypotenuse. You could just use Pythagorean theorem to calculate that. But we would like to use the Pythagorean identity. So we're going to say sine squared of theta and 13 over 30 squared equals 1. Sine squared of theta, you subtract over 169 over 900, because that's 13 squared, that's 30 squared. So we need 900 over 900. So we take our 900 and minus our, one nine, our 169. That's given us 731 over 900. And when we take the square root of both of those, we're going to get plus or minus the square root of 731 over 30. But because it's in the first quadrant, we want the positive version of that. 